so it's clear from the last one I think I've got to wear a headset okay so um, it's half 12 I, let's go for another one it's uh, 10 minutes uh, configuring Hyper-V let's see if I can make it a little bit better this time um, so the agenda for this one is moving on from the uh, previous one where we set up Windows 2008 as our domain controller um, I'm now going to add the Hyper-V role to it and then we'll run through the settings of Hyper-V, go through Virtual Network Manager, creating a new virtual machine and configuring all the settings of that virtual machine. So in my lab, first of all, I am hosting the Hyper-V role on the domain controller, which is, well, I wouldn't do it in reality, and I don't think many people would. Um, I don't honestly know what Microsoft would say about that, but um, I don't think many people would actually do that. Um, the reason I'm doing it is I want my Hyper-V um, host to actually be part of a domain, because later on I want it to be managed by Virtual Machine Manager, so it can't just be in a work group. Anyway, enough waffling, got 10 minutes, so uh, let's get straight on to it, which is um, adding the Hyper-V role. So, uh, once you've installed uh, Windows 2008 and you've added your new domain controller role from um, last time, what we can do is just pop up the server manager console and uh, have a look at roles and we can now see I've got the Active Directory role services, I've got the DNS services and there's no crosses, everything's looking all cool there. Um, if you want to add the Hyper-V role, yes I have got it installed just to save a reboot but if you, what you would need to do is just click on add roles, go to next bloody hard this one, I need a consultant I tell you okay and uh, click on Hyper-V next, cancel, next, next, next etc and it will do a reboot right so once it's done the reboot what you'll have is um, a console and it would have asked you a, a, a few questions about um, how you're going to manage that Hyper-V server over what interface etc and I just want to run through that uh, with you first of all so I'm going to go through the Hyper-V manager go to the properties of Hyper-V um, and go to the virtual network manager now what you can see here is I've got one network if you like, uh, one virtual network and that's local error connection virtual network which will start up in my local control panel of the host uh, and that's mapped to my external Broadcom card so basically if any virtual machines on that network then they'll be able to see outside of my machine now if I had multiple network cards what I could do is I could add a new one you know that takes me out external you know and select the other card and that perhaps could take me to another route it could take me to maybe an iSCSI storage etc or it could be dedicated for management or it could be a cluster heartbeat network there's so many different reasons for having uh, external ones it could be internal only so only the virtual machines and the host can actually uh, participate in that network um, it might be useful if you're at work for example you don't want to everyone else in the whole company to see your machines or private virtual network is all the virtual machines are on their own network and they can't see the host so you can do some really exciting things you can have you know two virtual networks two internal networks and you know have an ISA server between them with two network cards one on one network one on the other or one on one internal network one on the external bridging out you know again all of this on one server so that's looking at the settings there now, I don't know if you remember my configuration from last time, but on my little poor server here, um, when we look at disk management, um, I'm going to put my VMs on the Stripe set across my two um, disks there. So I just want to configure Hyper-V accordingly, taking us into the next stage, which is Hyper-V settings. Really nothing to do here. So specify where the virtual hard disks are going to be by default. So I'm going to put them in D Hyper-V VMs and the config files again, D Hyper-V uh, VMs. If this was a cluster, they just have to be on shared storage. Um, various keyboard options to release it, you know, like VMware's control or escape on this one, it's control or left arrow, etc. Uh, use credentials, so when you double click on a virtual machine, it automatically uses your username and password that you've logged onto the domain, etc. You can delete it, oh, I'm a bit scared, I've got all that stuff around, etc. And uh, reset checkboxes. So that's all your Hyper-V settings, nothing too hard there at all. Let's go straight into creating our new virtual machine so our first virtual machine new virtual machine I'm going to go with a lot of the defaults here um, let's call it new virtual machine and click on next 
amount of memory I've got, 512 meg, that will do for now. Um, again, I've got 8 gig in my host machine, but 512 will do fine. We put it on my virtual machine, which is the one that's bridged externally. And we'll create a new virtual hard disk in the relevant location. Now, the size of it is 127 gigabytes. I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. It's a dynamic expanding disk, so it's not going to use all your storage. It would expand as you know, as it uses, as it as it needs to, as basically it contains more storage, which is fine for a lab environment. You know, production environment is questionable um, for performance. So I'm going to say install an operating system later there. Let's click on next, click on finish. How am I doing for time? Not sure. Right, so let's go into the properties of that virtual machine. Right click, um, go into settings and we can now go and add more network devices to it. So again, it, it might be on the internal network, etc. Legacy one, a bit more compatible for NT4. So um, you don't need to have to install the integration services. Uh, BIOS control things like the boot order, how much memory it's got. So I might knock that up to 1024. How much processes it's got. So I've got two cores, so I can give this to, etc. I can also say, well, this is going to be System Center Operation Manager, so it's quite performance um, hungry. So I'm going to guarantee this is going to have 10% of the resources of this machine. So that's a way of controlling it. And I could also throttle it and say, but you're not going to have more than 80, etc. Um, you can also control resource utilization by weight. The more weight it's got, or the heavier it is, the more resources it's allocated. So I suppose the heavier it is, the more you eat in some respects. Um, if you want to make it more compatible, are you going to make it, migrate this virtual machine between different processor platforms? Tick on that box. If it's NT4, tick on that box that you're virtualizing and the process utilization doesn't go mad. Other than that, guys, everything else is really kind of straightforward and I think I'm probably getting up to my 10 minutes. That's the name of the virtual machine. That's integration services, so you can cut and paste between the host, you can heartbeat between the host, um, time synchronization, you can shut down a host by right clicking and saying shut down in the Hyper-V console. Um, different place for snapshot file locations, maybe uh, different hard disk for performance reasons, and um, I'll leave the rest to you. In actual fact, what I'll try and do is just squeeze in is go to my CD-ROM he says, uh, or DVD, and let's put in a physical drive, sorry, an image file. And another thing to have on your host machine is have all your VMs nice and ready, so have your ISOs nice and ready, so I'm just going to put in the R2 ISO, click on OK, and let's start this up. And the nice thing, because it's R2, it's got all the integration services in there. So that's starting. As you can see, starting Windows, blah, blah, blah. And that's just starting the installation and of R2, and I'll leave it there.